Hey everyone, this is Louis 7 and in this video I have a guide for the Red Line Burglar in the Lord of the Rings Online. This is a class and spec I have not covered before, and I recently ran a poll on Twitter and Burglar was the top choice for that for which class I should focus on next. But with this I do want to quickly point out some small changes to these build videos I am doing. And first off, I decided I would further emphasize the gameplay portion of the guide, and of course that will still be at the end. But like with the recent Hunter guides, I found out it was taking just a little bit longer to get through those, and in a good way, so I will purposefully actually make that a little bit longer in my planning out. Anyway, the format is generally otherwise the same, and I will essentially be building out a leveling build to help players get started. In this case it will be with the Redline Burglar, and then I will cover some notable traits for further in the build as you get more trait points, but I also, of note, I do plan to eventually cover general class guides that will cover virtue, stats, and those other general character building systems that apply more to the broad class. And I'll also do gameplay in that, but again, that will be in its own full class guide separate from these very detailed specialization guides, which that stuff wouldn't applies more broadly to the classes rather. Anyway, with the Redline Burglar, it has a great spec for leveling and fast leveling with the Burglar. It does a ton of damage and more specifically a ton of burst damage, which is what we're concerned about with leveling and that's good for leveling and it just really lets you get through combat super fast. And on top of all of that, there are actually some good utility and survival traits within the red line as well that we will cover, but let's go ahead and get started with this trade analysis, starter build, and gameplay guide. So moving in game here, I recently got killed by a mortal orc while I was AFK doing the intro and then I had to revive and take care of that, but this is the build, what it will look like when I'm finished. And there are a couple important things I do want to point out once we get through the building. There are some certain choices I make with the red line, specifically for leveling as we go through it, but this is actually a general build. Again, it's a 50 trait point starter build, and it is a general build that will work for even group content, but we'll talk about that as we build it. Anyway, let's go ahead and respec, and then we can see the traits as we get them and I will move to a slightly safer area but going into the red line we actually only get two little things we do get increased stealth movement speed so that's one thing that's going to help with the leveling just the faster movement and stealth you spend a lot of time in stealth and being slow with that would definitely be annoying you also do get increased stealth level so enemies are less likely to notice you again that is just in general good but to point out the skills we get, we get Knives Out, which is a 2 minute cooldown skill, but it is an AoE. Burglars were somewhat recently updated, it's actually been a while since they were updated, but now Double Edge Strike and one of their other skills is an AoE. Those things used to not be, this used to be our only AoE option. But this doesn't even hit many targets, and the main thing with this is it actually is a Force Taunt on the Burglar, 10 second AoE Force Taunt. So that's pretty interesting, it also decreases the incoming you damage you, you take significantly. The incoming damage you take is set to 30% and you reflect 30% of damage. Also of note, you cannot parry, evade, or block. So that's a little bit odd, but also with that during the 10 second buff, you reflect damage. So while you're not BPEing, you are reflecting damage that means, but yeah, that'll give you a good defensive boost and a force taunt, AoE force taunt, and just an AoE damage option if you are alone and just fighting enemies. Otherwise, we get faint attack. And this one starts out in the critical chain where it's activated by double edge strike. And double edge strike, that is a skill that you get a critical hit, and this is the beginning of your critical hit chain double edge strike. And after you use double edge strike, then faint attack will open up. And also of note, this gives you a buff that it enables Surprise Strike while out of stealth, as we'll see later. It affects more things, and Faint Attack becomes pretty crazy. Uh, burglar, Redline Burglar gameplay changes in general as you get more trait points. There are some significant changes to the gameplay we'll see later on, so it's really different from low level to high level, and that's one of the things I'm going to help go through with this. But we'll go ahead and spec into the Redline and start off with just building the traits. And in the first row here, we have increased stealth level, so enemies are less likely to detect you in stealth. Another one here is skills critical multiplier, and of note, I have to fix my UI layout. Okay, sorry for that issue, but now we can see everything actually in the middle of the screen, and that will just be easier for viewing. But the other trait in this row will increase our critical multiplier, so our critical hits will do more 
damage is the way that works. And as far as these two traits go, the one that will impact your gameplay most is the critical multiplier. And I do just want to point out there is a chain with the increased stealth level that you can get increased damage from stealth with that, but it requires you to get the increased stealth level. But the problem with the increased stealth level is it won't really help you that much. It will make enemies less likely to notice you if you really want something like that. It does play to the burglar fantasy of being super sneaky and super stealthy. You can get that, but in general, I wouldn't recommend it. It will be less impactful to the gameplay and especially your damage. But spending five points in that will unlock our first set bonus, and this is just improved Knives Out and just simply reduces the cooldown of Knives Out from two minutes to a minute and 15 seconds so you can use it a little bit more often still has a long cooldown and it's honestly a kind of boring trait or set bonus for our first one because it just doesn't impact too much but being able to use knives out more frequently just means more aoe at this low level which is a little bit nice but otherwise for the traits in this row we got stun dust which is just a one minute cooldown five seconds stun so that's useful for the crowd control and just general survivability a little bit so you can stun enemies if you pull a bunch you have a lot of stuff like that so you'll have exploit opening which is a fellowship maneuver starter but also if you're solo you can just use it to stun an enemy for five seconds and having another stun would be nice but we do want to look at the other traits in this row and the first one is attacks enhanced by stealth have increased critical chance and the sixth rank and that will give them increased critical damage so at this point, it will mainly affect skills that you only use from stealth. So only your stealth opener will be affected by this. And just to point out feint attack, that will enable surprise strike from stealth. So this will affect the surprise strike that is enabled by feint attack. So after using feint attack, you will have surprise strike from stealth essentially, and that will gain the bonus of this trait, just to point out how that works. And that'll come into play with some other skills later in the red line. But moving on there is also just the flat critical chance. So just to point out, you can get critical chance from stealth up to 10% or just 5% critical chance for everything. And you do spend a lot of time in combat out of stealth actually and out of like stealth boosting things and a lot of skills aren't even boosted by stealth. So in general, I would recommend death strikes because you will get more effect out of it. It'll be more useful for you. But if you want this done, you can also get Stun Dust. I will be personally saving that for a little bit later in my build. But if you want this done, you could definitely put the point in it. All you're really losing from that is 1% critical chance, which is very insignificant overall, especially at low level and while leveling. But I'll go ahead and just go with the critical chance to maximize my character's damage while leveling. That's what I do or did on the low level burglar that you saw the gameplay on at the beginning. But Moving on, this does unlock the next set bonus and row of traits for us to look at. And this set bonus, it increases our critical and devastating critical damage. So just increased crit damage really plays to the crit theme with Redline Burglar, but that is simple so we can move on to the traits in this row. And the first one, as I already pointed out, increases our damage from stealth, but it requires us to put stuff in the stealth level. It's something to consider if we don't find other things, but as you saw with the preview for the build, it ultimately won't be better than the other things here. But moving on this one, the second trait in this row rather, Dance of Blade that increases our critical response skill damage. So that's going to be double edge strike and right now feign attack and and that will be something that is effective for our damage because a lot of our damage double edge strike is an insanely strong skill. First of all, it's immediate. It does hit three targets and it just does a lot of damage on its own. So it's a very effective skill in increasing the damage of that will be pretty helpful for us. And right now it also affects feign attack. And later on, we'll get some other things with our traits in the critical chain that that will also impact. And also in this row is aim, and aim is an important skill because when you use this, it will guarantee your next skill is a critical hit. And by doing that, you actually automatically unlock double edge strike again. That's a very strong skill. So with aim, you could actually go and stealth, use aim. And even if I apply this, I normally don't do a little bit of gameplay in the middle of the build because that makes my character very weak, but I think I can actually show this and that would be more impactful. So I can use aim as my opener unlocks double edge strike and then I can use my stealth opener and double edge strike right away and then we have feint attack open and 
Again, because I haven't spent all my trades that fight, actually I went a little bit slow. It did go pretty quickly. Wrong button there, but I just want to show how aimed work and I uh, still have some points to spend, obviously, but I didn't actually say that I would put points in aim, but that is ultimately what you want to do because it is pretty impactful. And just to point out, that does have a chain to it in this trait tree and in two more rows. We could get well practice, which reduces the cooldown of that and find footing, but we'll cover that later. Otherwise, we have to decide what we want to spend our points on. And what I recommend is Dance of Blades that'll just increase the damage of your critical response skills that will be more effective than getting increased crit chance from stealth at this point, I think. And Stun Dust, that's of course if you want it. But of no, I actually didn't even see this to point it out because when I put my points in this, you'll probably notice I have to put five points in it and then you can unlock vital points, which will be in the next row. But if I just put four points in this for now, that would unlock the next row and set bonus and that's where we're going to go. So this set bonus is reveal weakness and reveal weakness just gets an increased critical defense buff, debuff rather because of reveal weakness debuffs the enemy. So right now it just gives them increased incoming damage and decreased finesse rating, crit defense, Resist rating and this will increase the magnitude of the enemy's critical defense and we can go ahead and apply this even just to show the actual difference so if I press H here that will lock the re reveal weakness debuff and then when we apply this we can actually see the magnitude of that just to know and it does give a little bit increased magnitude on the critical defense buff it's not anything major these numbers are actually fairly small but um, just something to point out with that just to let you all really know how it works give the full picture of this build But anyway, we can go ahead and move on to the next row And we only have one thing we could put points in in this row and this one's a little bit odd So your positional attacks deal more damage So you basically deal more damage when attacking behind enemies is how this essentially works out and That's a bit odd because solo you're often going to be in front of the enemies. You're not going to be behind them They're going to turn around and hit you. That's just how enemies work in the game But if you're doing group content, you like to position yourself behind enemies so They can't like I think parrying and evading is more likely if they're in front of you That's how at least how it used to work and in general you want to be behind enemies. They also a lot of enemies in group content have frontal AoE attacks that you want to avoid and things like that. Regardless of the damage you deal and the enemy's potential defenses. But with this on the burglar as well, you have further incentive to be behind enemies in group content if you get this trait. And with the final build you saw, I even had this for even like solo because you have things like stuns like your stun dust here and you have exploit opening. And I think you can even get another stun later on trip down here another five seconds done so you have a lot of things you can use where you can get behind enemies you also open fights behind enemies so eventually solo this is something to look back on but for now let's go ahead and look at the other trait in this row which is grayed out again we need more points in dance of blades to actually unlock this one but this one is your critical response skills have a chance to lower your target's crit defense so every critical chain skill will have up to a 45% chance. It starts at 15% chance, but to slightly lower the enemy's crit defense. So in effect, effectively, this will increase your critical magnitude, but because it is a debuff, it will apply to anybody. If you're like in a group, you will be decreasing the enemy's crit defense with this. And just to point out, there isn't really too much like super, super appealing at this point to spend our trait points and getting this would be nice and we do use our critical response skills a lot the positional damage would be okay we don't have too much to really utilize that besides our opener and our couple of stuns at this point so what i recommend and this actually nicely builds out to where we can get the next row is you get one point of dance of blades and then go ahead and get the three points in vital points and this will just help finish out your crit chain make it more useful and of note we'll actually get another crit chain skill right in the next row so building that up a little bit will help with that but otherwise our last point here can actually be spent and stun dust and that will perfectly finish out those three traits and unlock the next row that's just something very nice that i like but anyway to go ahead and move on that's what i would do and We'll go ahead and talk about the next set bonus, and this one is every crit you do 
will actually heal you and the amount it heals is very very tiny i don't know what is wrong with the scaling with this but it, with my character it basically does no healing at all and i have a low level leveling burglar again the background gameplay one at the beginning and end i also don't notice this so it's a very tiny heal that just doesn't scale right at all and you basically won't notice anything from this if I'm going to be honest. And also of note the heal if they ever do buff it and actually make it useful or noticeable. The heal itself has a 10 second cooldown so it won't trigger all the time because you will be critting a ton and I don't even think I said how this works but whenever you crit you get the heal. You get a tiny bit of healing initially and then a little bit more over time. But it has a 10 second trigger cooldown so you will be critting very frequently on the red line burglar here and essentially the way this works is you'd actually permanently have that heal up effectively because you should be critting about once every 10 seconds and having that always triggering so that's just the way it works and how it will actually play out but the actual heal from it is basically nothing anyway moving on for the first trait in this row we have flashing blades and this is one that says after using double edge strike so it's part of your crit chain and it even says in the skill type there melee comma critical hit chain so you know that and this does a lot of damage it is a powerful attack against the enemy as it says and it has three max targets so it's another aoe to follow double edge strike up with and just a note double edge strike as i mentioned is immediate and you can use it to animation cancel and really cancel the animation of whatever you were using to immediately get the effect of double edge strike this skill is not going to be immediate, it's not even a fast skill, but mostly the animation delays that the fast is important for have mostly been removed with the burglar, so um, that was kind of a completely random note, but yeah, flashing blades will be very good to get, will definitely help our gameplay. And also in this row we have well practice, and I already pointed out that this reduces the cooldown of aim up to 60 seconds which is the insane part so aim has a 1 minute 20 second cooldown that's an 80 second cooldown you can reduce this by 60 seconds all the way down to 20 seconds which again is pretty crazy i don't know if this um orc i feel like he's about to run up to me so i can go on stealth actually and hopefully can avoid the enemy and getting off from that sidetrack well practice here will definitely be something we want to get but getting flashing blades will be more effective first and these are of course more appealing than previous previous rows of traits that we saw earlier in this line so going ahead and getting that that will definitely help our gameplay using aim more frequently guaranteeing a critical and unlocking the critical chain a lot more frequently will be very helpful but now we have to spend one more trait point and really decide what we want it on so I will say if you're doing a lot of group content on your leveling burglar I would just go ahead and get the positional damage that will be more effective for you but if you're mainly solo and just going about stuff on your own leveling without a group and not where you can position yourself frequently behind enemies you can go ahead and get the critical chance from your stealth skills and that will be just one point in those and we'll lock the next row but this next set bonus here is your critical chain skills will actually ignore part of the enemy's block parry and evade and just to point out with that you should have that covered with finesse anyway while leveling you won't have it covered with finesse but at high levels and even mainly at like the level cap for in-game instances you want to have your finesse kept, capped which what finesse does is it reduces your opponent's chance to block parry and evade so effectively that part of the set bonus shouldn't really come into play because you ha should have that already covered. But another thing the set bonus does is it bypasses the target's mitigation. And just to go back to the BPE, again while leveling that will be actually a little bit effective and you might notice your critical chain skills do hit a little bit more but I don't want to point that out with finesse. Another part bypassing 10% of the target's mitigation effectively means they actually just do more damage is really how that will work out for you. So it's a nice set bonus that boosts our critical chain skills as we just got flashing blade recently and by, at this point you also even have aim just so you can unlock the critical chain guarantee and unlocks with double edge strike there. So that will just significantly boost our critical chain here. Otherwise we do unlock the traits in this row and the per first one is improved hide in plain sight so this one is a bit odd because if you use hide in plain sight and i should actually cover what that is 
Hide in plain sight has a long cooldown. It's a seven minute cooldown, but it immediately puts you in stealth. And the burglar, as it says, it'll ignore slowing effects and you can move at normal run speed. So if you're in a super slowing area, a puddle, even something like that, you can use to improve hide in plain sight or just hide in plain sight. It's also called hips. But you can use this to avoid that and run out normal and you're in stealth. And on top of that, it improves stealth. So using this skill will not break stealth. Um, that's not what I wanted to read. But if you're already in stealth, you can use hips and it won't break stealth. Um, that's just a random thing. But you actually will not have your stealth broken by damage. So you can continue to take AOE damage. Like I said, if you're in a puddle that's slowing you down, you can use hips to get out of that at normal speed and you won't break stealth from taking the damage or any AOE damage that an enemy could hit you with. Also of note, this is immediate. I don't think I pointed that out. So it's just like instantly effective. And also to point out, you still can take damage even though you are stealth and will basically drop aggro of all the enemies. So that's a very effective skill for escaping things. If you're in a fight where you just can't take it anymore, even in group content, where you're about to die, you could just use hips and that is it. You can go go run away or even reset the fight. You'll be in stealth. You'll actually be put in stealth after the 10 second duration ends. So you don't have to worry about breaking stealth and all that. And you can just get ready for the next fight or whatever. But yeah, that's a pretty crazy skill and taking a while here because our set or trait here rather that one affects hide in plain sight. It reduces the cooldown by up to three minutes, so it significantly reduces the cooldown. We'll actually go ahead and incur improved hips here. And that would reduce the cooldown to four minutes. So if you're using hide in plain sight, if you're getting in these dangerous situations, dangerous situations very frequently. I would I would say you could just put the points in hide in plain sight. Of course there are other traits we would rather that boost our damage and just of note the other trait in this row only requires one point so that is something we'll have to consider. So there are other traits in the tree that we would rather put points in for boosting our damage but if you really want that increased decreased cooldown it's definitely okay and just to point out the fifth rank in this trait actually makes hide in plain sight remove all the debuffs from the burglar so if you have a ton of debuffs on you they could actually still kill you with hide in plain sight and now with this this will just remove it with rank 5 so if you are in those situations you can definitely put you could even put all five points in here if you wanted but i would actually recommend the next one here i mentioned we'd get another stun and already pointed out trip so this one is just another stun. It can start fellowship maneuvers that will be helpful. Certain group content fellowship maneuvers are useful. I know in general they're less effective in doing like the particular combinations, but there are some mechanics where you need to basically use fellowship maneuvers on bosses to go about them. And they are helpful a little bit. And uh, more of the point of this trait, at least for this guide, is especially for leveling, is it's a stun for you. So that's just going to be effective at your utility. You'll have a third stun, which is pretty crazy. All these stuns you get with the Redline Burglar. And that's def definitely going to be something to help you. And I would go ahead and put the point in it. I think getting that stun and the Fellowship Maneuver in group content would be more useful than just slightly increasing your damage with one point in these. But again, if you want to get the boost to hide in plain sight and reduce the cooldown, you can. But as far as my build goes, I'll just finish out with four more points to unlock the last row and putting my four more points again in my stealth enhanced skills critical chance. Anyway, this is the point. Once you spend 30 points in the red line burglar tree, and just to note, this might be depending on how many class deeds you have done, you'll maybe be around level 50 to 60 at this point. So really getting through the Moria content in that level range. This is when Burglar gameplay significantly changes because you get practice bluff for the set bonus. And this one makes feign attack become improved feign attack. And I think the best way to go about this is actually just show the difference between feint attack and go ahead and apply my traits here and then we'll get to see improved feign attack. So I'll actually put feint attack up here. Um, we'll move it out of the way first. 
The other thing this set bonus does that I just want to point out is you do get increased damage from stealth plus 5%, so just a minor boost on that. But really the main thing is feint attack becomes improved feint attack, so let's go ahead and apply this and we should have improved feint attack somewhere. There it is. The icon also totally changes and it just looks different, but oops. There we go. I want it go away. But improved feint attack versus feint attack. So improved feint attack, first of all, does a tiny bit more damage on its own. But there's just so much more going on with this skill. And the very first thing is it doesn't actually require the critical chain improved feint attack. So right now, feint attack you have to use after already having used double edge strike to as like your critical chain opener. And with this, you can just use it. That's why it's on number three on my skill bar and not with my critical chain response skills. It's, it's a significant gameplay change because you can use it without having the critical response and that's going to be a game changer. But also it enables all of your from stealth skills. So you'll get the stealth boost from cunning attack. I'll actually go in order. So surprise strike. This one, this is a skill that is pretty slow. It does an okay amount of damage, but just to point out, you do have other more useful skills with the burglar that are faster and just more worth using in general. Surprise strike is kind of a fallback skill as one to use if you don't have much else available. But anyway, surprise strike, it does get increased damage from stealth and it also gets the critical hits that increase critical damage from stealth or rather it deals more damage from stealth and then it does have a bonus for critical hits. Um, the other thing it enables from stealth is cunning attack. So you'll get a potentially stronger bleed and just more damage from cunning attack using it from stealth. Provoke is actually a big one at low level. So provoke is actually one of the skills that will basically one shot mobs in the level 30s range or so. So that's very strong to use from stealth and will actually be your strongest stealth opener. Provoke here and it's kind of weird because the description on this is a little bit outdated. It says it deals slight damage. It really deals a lot of damage, especially when you enable it from stealth. It does significantly more when it's enabled from stealth, but also of note, it increases your critical chance by 20%. And that's pretty crazy. That's a ton of crit chance that you get 20% crit is just crazy to be critting that much, but that's one of the things Provoke does really good and why you want to get that buff up pretty quickly. And just to point out what improved feint attack does with that is it does enable it from stealth, so the increased damage and getting big crits with that is always a good thing. Anyway, the other thing is actually trip slash tingle foot. I'm going to be honest, I'm not entirely sure where tingle foot is, unless it's a skill I've been missing on my on my burglar, it doesn't look like I have one called Tingle Foot. It could be a yellow line thing. I'm not as familiar with the yellow line or even a blue line thing or even just an old thing. Maybe it's used to be called Tingle Foot. But anyway, the whole point with that is trip. This one will be enabled from stealth as well. So when you're stealth with trip, it will start the stun and enable a fellowship maneuver. So that's going to be useful as well. And if I get out of sneak, actually, you'll see that trip is unavailable. So that's the way um, that works. But I'll go ahead and go back to stealth. But the point is that improved feint attack will actually enable that for 10 seconds. So effectively, you can just use trip once you get the improved feint attack. Anyway, the other thing it does is location is everything. And if I remember correctly, that is actually a set bonus. Yeah, location is everything. I'm not entirely sure why that's uh, from stealth skills. If that is an old thing again, a lot of skills in Lotra have outdated descriptions and icons. And unfortunately, I'm only more fam familiar with the burglar with their more recent update. I used to not like their gameplay too much before it was updated. And I did a little bit of leveling, but overall, it just wasn't my favorite thing. So I'm more familiar with the updated gameplay. But anyway, yeah, that's kind of my point. I'm not entirely sure what the from stealth bonus there with location is everything, unfortunately, which is a bit odd because I'm making a guide here. It seems like I should know this, that. But the other thing that improved feint attack does is it give you increased melee damage. for So for 10 seconds, you'll just get a flat melee damage buff. That is 
also nice and as far as I know that is actually um, everything and one thing you'll notice with faint attack and improved faint attack this one doesn't change between them but when you get a crit or devastate on that you will increase your positional damage and get increased critical skills multiplier for 15 seconds so getting a crit on improved faint attack is actually going to be helpful so you can enable that buff ideally you would have enough of a crit chance and you wouldn't have to actually worry about that you could every five seconds if you use faint attack you could ideally have that buff up for the full duration for 15 seconds and refresh it about once in every three uses of faint attack but that's just something i want to point out because it not, was another part of the skill but again the really big thing with faint attack besides enabling all those skills from stealth is that it doesn't require the crit response it doesn't require double edge strike now but i spent i feel like i spent like 10 minutes on that one skill i'm not entirely sure if that's what happened but yeah that was a long time for that and now we are finally ready to move on to the last traits the last traits and the last row so we have sneak attack which just increases our damage from stealth by 100 percent so doubling our stealth damage that's pretty crazy and the other thing is another active skill this one's coup de grace which potentially isn't pronounced like that, but that's what I will be calling it in this. And this does a lot of damage. It does three attacks and all of them do a good chunk of damage. And it has a 30 second cooldown, but also to point out if Coupe de Grace kills an enemy, you will enter stealth. So this can be an effective finisher to really kill an enemy and then just let you enter stealth right away. You won't have to activate stealth. Also sneak the skill that enters you into stealth as I call it. That one actually has a 10 second cooldown and sometimes you'll just be going about gameplay on your red line burglar so fast that sneak is on cooldown and you can't enter stealth and coup de grace is just something that can help with that. But otherwise for the point in this row I do recommend getting coup de grace getting the active skill the 30 second cooldown one first and then getting the double damage from stealth that will be helpful and now we have to spend three more trait points to unlock the last set bonus here so I do want to point out that you could actually we have to spend yeah three more get three more ranks in the whole tree so you could get three traits in the blue line or something and just to point out this is the actual trait i would get on this character in the blue line but to start to finish out our 50 point build so you could do that and just get started in the blue line but Again, we do want to look back at the red line and see if there was anything we missed. And of course, getting the critical damage from stealth. Strike from shadows, finishing that out would definitely be helpful. And here you could put two points in positional damage. And I will say, if you are just never, if you're always in the front of enemies and not behind them, then I would not put the points in in this. It won't really help you if you aren't using your stuns or things like that to make it where you can get behind enemies that just won't provide anything for you you won't get the positional damage boost but in general if you do run group content again as i mentioned i'd actually recommend that over strike from shadows but i would go ahead just for my build and my starter build put the yeah two points in that i'd actually put all five points in that let me backtrack a little bit i'd get all five points in that but once i put two points in that that would unlock the next set bonus but yeah, getting that positional damage, even solo again, try to get behind enemies and things like that, but especially group content, which I used to do a little bit more on this character, that is going to be helpful. Then we can look further in the build and maybe some other traits even in the red line that we did not pick up. But let's go ahead and look at the set bonus. So with this, it's just improved sneak. So this is another game changer with the red line burglar. So it used to be to guarantee a crit from stealth you would have to use aim but with this you are guaranteed to crit with surprise strike and cunning attack and just to point out the green text does say plus 100 percent surprise strike critical chance but it does also affect cunning attack and with this you actually want to open a lot with cunning attack because getting the increased bleed and it just has more benefit using it from stealth and guaranteeing a crit over surprise strike because actually you're one shotter if you're looking for something to immediately deal damage from stealth you actually want to use provoke and with that you can use aim aim has a 20 second cooldown so using it on provoke isn't a big deal but i did just want to point that out and if you have aim on cooldown and you do want immediate damage that's when you could use surprise strike from stealth as your opener 
But yeah, this is just a nice thing that you can open a crit with cunning attack, which means that will open double edge strike your critical chain. You can use that, use flashing blades, and then you can go about all of your other stuff. Um, burglar gameplay, as I've mentioned through this, the actual gameplay is a little bit complex and fast paced. I'm a little bit worried with the gameplay section, but saving that for later, I will go ahead and talk about what we could do further in the build with our trait points and really in general in the yellow line there's going to be a lot of debuffing and supportive type type stuff you could get trick dust in the eyes just increase enemy miss chance and decrease their run speed for your trick you could get increased morale and things like that so a lot of things with tricks but most of your damage boosting stuff will be in the blue line and just to point out getting the increased stealth level and hidden daggers increase from stealth damage i don't think will be worth putting any points in that compared to what we could get in the blue line and for the first throw in the blue line we do have another stealth level one so probably don't want that and we can boost our evade chance it's really our only other option that won't be the most insanely helpful thing either but it will increase your defenses so it is good for that at least but the main thing for the 50 trait point starter build that we want here is gambler's advantage and that's just another bleed another damage over time and this one actually requires a critical hit so it's another part in the critical chain you see something missing for between shift one and shift three for me and that is gambler's advantage which i'd put in shift two so this finishes out our starter build and that's what it looks like and now i want to talk about further in the build if you have more trait points as i already mentioned the yellow line has a lot of things that you could go for support if you want to focus on that the blue line does have more things that would increase your damage that i would recommend and just a lot of things in that so you could get exposed throat for another potential stun this is just another skill to use after double edge strike really and you probably want to use it too often but having the chance at this done that could be something just to look out for to kind of cap in the blue line otherwise a lot of this stuff affects gambles and you don't really have any gambles here but one thing that you would want to get is burglar bleed damage your damage over time is pretty significant so that's pretty good you do have bob and weave healing if you want a little bit of healing actually let me take that back you don't even have bob and weave i totally messed up on that but <laughs> Uh, just ignore that part and the other thing here is roll the dice that just increases our melee damage but of note the sixth rank in that increases melee critical chance by 2.5 percent so that's something good you also have damage over time pulses this does affect all of your damage over time so it's not just gambler's advantage from the previous trait that it requires and it also does affect cunning attacks so that would be pretty helpful so those are just some things to look out for in the blue line as far as the yellow line goes, you could get increased morale. 10% morale is pretty significant and that would increase your survivability. You also do have something for increased physical and tactical mitigation that'd be helpful for survivability again. And just a note in the first row, if you did get the trick dust and eyes for the debuff, you could also get a startling twist, which is a stun in the first rank and that will just get the single target stun. It does require a trick and you would have the trick dust and eyes. And that would remove the trick but also this one when you put the second rank in it, it becomes an aoe stun an aoe eight second stun which is insane just a lot of aoe crowd control there and long duration stun so that would be something to look out for in the yellow line and also of note you have your like trick removal cooldown so this would be a trick removal skill and you could just use the stun more frequently and just a few things in the yellow line. Again, that's the line I'm least familiar with actually playing. But there are a couple things there that you could look towards getting mainly with defensive boosts and getting the AoE stun with Startling Twist, I think, after spending more points in the blue line and really getting your damage boost out of that line. Anyway, this is the final starter build and we are ready to go to the gameplay section. Now this is where things get complicated because on the red line burglar things do move super fast so I'll try to keep up with the gameplay a little bit and talking about what's going on especially how our traits have effective stuff. So in general at the starter fights it's good to put reveal weakness and go ahead and get that started but if I use cunning attack here that did not actually critical hit. Um, that's very odd because as far as I knew, that actually worked out that it was guaranteed to critical hit. That was a very bad showcase, and 
all the time I've played on this burglar, I'm pretty sure that's the way it has actually worked. But just so you all know, I am in the landscape of Mordor. There's not too much Light of Rendell debuff stuff going on here at this level, so that's actually a good thing. But I just want to try Cunning Attack again, and there it crit. Um, this is a time using Double Edge Strike and Flashing Blades after that stuff has been worked out and keeping up with the Cunning Attack bleed, that is good. And also using Faint Attack, of course, that on cooldown is going to be useful and really again there's just so much going on of note in longer fights using gambler's advantage before double edge strike would actually be a good thing to start building up and tearing up that bleed i probably won't have much of that here nothing like group content where i could really go and work towards building building up a ton of damage um of note this is actually a fight that i would use cunning attack and then i could use just to show how that works um, it looks like I got wrong skill. Um, where There's my debuff remover. I always have it hidden on my characters, but um, if I get another crit, I want to show using Gambler's Advantage. So I'm going to use Gambler's Advantage, then Flashing Blades, and then I can use Aim, and I already had Double Edge Strike unlocked, but a lot going on there. I'm going to use Coup de Grace, and that did kill the enemy, but I probably won't be entered into stealth here because I'm in combat, and of course that won't work. But I hope just me going through the gameplay a little bit helps with helps with how our traits affect the things. Another thing with Faint Attack again, here's actually a time I can use Aim and then Provoked and show that. So I used Provoked, which did a ton of damage. I don't know how my target got off there. And it almost, almost killed the enemy when I comboed it with using Double Edge Strike right away. And again, Double Edge Strike is immediate, so you can use it with the whole animation canceling thing and there's Coup de Grace I actually used that and it killed the enemy so now I entered stealth and I have a bleed on me which yeah that removed my stealth unfortunately but I'm going to go ahead and start this orc and one thing you haven't seen me use is a stun where I can get behind enemies so I actually have all my positional damage benefits right here and that was nice I'm going to hit this enemy. I'll go ahead and use another stun again and get my positional damage again. I um, actually should have used Fane Attack there. I also noticed I haven't actually used... Uh, what's that skill? Knives Out to show that. It's just something kind of infrequently used in any of the AoE situations I should have been using it. It has a short enough cooldown that you can frequently use it. Let's see there. I think we've pretty much killed out most of the enemies in this area, and I keep I keep having debuffs that are removing my stealth. But oh yeah, another thing I wanted to point out. Um, if I use provoke here, I don't have it from stealth, and he's evading my attacks. But that's okay. One thing I did want to point out though is the animation cancel you can get from Adol. So for some reason, I accidentally pressed the wrong button. I pressed eight, and I meant to press six. But if you use Coup de Grace or Surprise Strike. Even flashing blades and a tiny bit, even double edge strike, those just have they're some of your longer animation skills compared to cunning attack, subtle stab is super quick. But you can actually use Adult. That one does interrupt enemies, but it has a 10 second cooldown and you can actually use it just to cancel the animations and will be something to help your burglar gameplay a little bit. So this fight I'll just open with cunning attack and then I'll open double edge strike and maybe use faint attack to get my stealth bonuses. Then I can use aim. I'll actually use double edge strike and then um, Coup de Grace and all the animation cancel that with that all just to show you all. So yeah, that was super quick. The actual time it took to go off with Coup de Grace. Um, in general, again, I hope that going through all this explaining a little bit, I know the burglar has a lot. It's very fast paced, a lot going on with it. I hope this section helps a little bit. Just to show again, because it is something while leveling that you want to use a lot is provoked out of stealth. And that's just a very strong opener. It doesn't give you a bleed like cunning attack at high level, cunning attack and high health mobs. That's generally going to be more useful. Also, something I'm not keeping up with is actually my faint attack buff, which I should be, and even provoke, which gives the critical chance. That's another thing I should be keeping up with. But yeah, using kind of in general, I would say double edge strike right away, just because it's immediate and will animation cancel is a good thing, but also want to keep up with faint attack, cunning attack. There's so many things on the burglar to really want to keep up with. Um, there's a animation canceled with flashing blades there. Flashing blades in general is a strong skill. 
it does a lot of damage but really keeping up your boss with improved feign attack here provoke even and keeping the debuff of cunning attack and utilizing double edge strike and um, even the bleed from gambler's advantage and longer fights just so many things and if you really need to if you want to get the increased damage from something you could use um you could use your stuns to get behind enemies and also just get more damage from using stuff positionally so here i'll go ahead and open with cunning attack use this is actually a time i'd consider using gambler's advantage but already too late for that so i will use gambler's advantage and then i'm going to actually use aim then flashing blades and i can cancel the animation of flashing blades which has a long animation again with um, double edge strike and that'll just like right re-enable flashing blades for me to use again I still haven't actually used knives out I don't think so I'll go ahead and use that on this next fight again that is a really good defensive thing it will help your defenses so I'll go ahead and use knives out here maybe um if I have Improved faint attack, I can actually use aim for the good crit damage from uh, provoke because then I'd have stealth provoked after using faint attack and that is another situation you can use aim just to get the increased big crit stuff from provoke but otherwise I'm just going to do a couple more fights again I did want to specifically put more emphasis on the gameplay section I feel like uh, just from feedback that's been some of the more helpful parts along with the actual building so just one of the things that used to be on the burglar that i was doing there was coupe de Gris. opening with that might seem like a good thing but compared to actually uh, provoke as far as getting the maximum immediate damage actually isn't really the most effective thing anymore and then feint attack of course i'm keeping that up using double edge strike I'm going to use flashing blades i already have aim available again i'm actually going to use surprise strike but it was blocked this is this character just in general while leveling you probably notice enemies are evading and blocking me and things like that and my finesse actually is okay-ish at 15.2 percent but that's not not up to where you really want to be i think around 25 percent if i remember correctly um yeah, there are a lot of fights I just don't even bother entering stealth because things go so quick you don't even have to worry about it. You can be like almost champion like in a way where you just go about your combat. Of course you still are a burglar but in general champions I just think of them as running in and not really caring, not being sneaky and there's just not too much. I think that's the first time I actually used Gambler's Advantage. Double Edge Strike was on cooldown and I was able to use it. I'm perfectly fine that that enemy got completely killed and that's what happens with the burglar sometimes just things go by so fast like that going to use feint attack i'm getting so many crits it's crazy and that's really the way it is i'm going to actually use um uh, provoke from stealth as i had it with improved feint attack that buff on it But yeah, I hope, I feel like I'm just showing the same thing over and over at this point. So I think that is a good point to actually wrap up the gameplay section. And just to point out, this is a green mob I'm going to use. Stealth provoked with aim and then he parried me. Um, I was just going to try to actually show it once shot. But again, I hope this gameplay section helped. Again, the gameplay does go by extremely fast. So it's a little bit hard for me to just like cover everything and really talk about everything as it's happening because it is an extremely fast paced class and one of the things that makes it enjoyable the new gameplay with that there i got my one shot and that's pretty much all you do you one shot the enemy and that's it but we can go ahead and transition to the outro here so as far as this guide goes again i hope the trade analysis first of all building the red line and the starter build the ultimate starter build we got will help you get started with the red line burglar and just learned a little bit more about it and how all your skills work but also i hope that gameplay section there even with the crazy fast-paced red line burglar gameplay i hope that did help and just showed how i used stuff and really how i went about the landscape content it's super quick and it's one of the big draws of the red line burglar it's super quick gameplay and you can just go about stuff super fast while also stealthing around but anyway as far as this guide goes i do appreciate any feedback again 
But with this one, if you enjoyed it and learned stuff about the red line burglar, learned something useful from it, please do consider liking and subscribing for more. And thanks for watching, everyone.